Hi, welcome to Superhero Rundown. I'm Crimson and I am getting a late start to the new year. I usually don't wait this long, but I am so tired of people messing up the Dark Phoenix Saga. Yes indeed, today we are talking about the Dark Phoenix Saga and how 20th Century Fox messed it up not once, but twice. Because while one is slightly better than the other, they both miss the point. Jean sacrifices herself to help her teammates and save them. It wasn't for men, but for her entire team. So let's look at why X-Men The Last Stand and Dark Phoenix are utter bullshit and pandering to male savior fantasies rather than giving Jean her own agency. First of all, let's talk about why the X-Men are so important as a team and a story. The X-Men are faced with bigotry and prejudice because they are different from everyone else. Their X-Gene, which manifests different powers, has been likened to civil rights and LGBTQ plus community struggles, as well as diversity with different mutants coming from all over the world and many backgrounds. In Mutants, Metaphor, and Marginalism, What Exactly Do the X-Men Stand For?, Andrew Miller explains a bit deeper. The X-Men and all mutants are often hated because they were born different from anyone else. Lee says, I wanted to spotlight a group of innocent people who were feared and shunned and later hunted and persecuted. I wanted to show how anyone, no matter how blameless, can be victimized if the fates so decree. Claremont felt the same motivation when he took over the writing for the series. The X-Men are hated, feared, and despised collectively by humanity for no other reason than they are mutants. So what we have here, intended or not, is a book that is about racism, bigotry, and prejudice. It is a story about downtrodden, repressed people fighting to change their situation, which I think anybody can empathize with. With that in mind, let's look at how the Dark Phoenix Saga should go. The basic premise of the Dark Phoenix Saga is that Jean is exposed to deadly radiation of a solar flare, which amplifies her powers. There's a whole thing with the Hellfire Club, Mastermind, and Emma Frost, but anyway, Jean helps the Hellfire Club get a hold of the X-Men. Scott, Jean's lover, boyfriend, or husband, depending on what stage of alive Jean is, has a psychic duel with Mastermind, which shatters the latter's hold over Jean. Anyway, she strikes down the X-Men and leaves, then realizing she isn't all-powerful, eats the energy of a star. Jean returns home, conflicted about her feelings for her loved ones and the powers of the Dark Phoenix. The X-Men are defeated again, and the Shi'ar, an alien race aware of the casual genocide in space, demand that Jean is put to death. So they battle on the moon. Anyway, hijinks ensue, and the X-Men battle Jean, and she sacrifices herself to save everyone. After a very emotional goodbye to Scott, the Watcher comments that she died as a human, even if she could become a god. So the story is about Jean and how she is the driving protagonist, antagonist of her own agency. Unfortunately, that is not how they did it in the movies. Starting with X-Men The Last Stand, the film begins with a flashback showing Jean displaying her power to Xavier and Magneto. It establishes the potential of her powers, but not much else to do with the Phoenix Saga. In the present, Scott keeps hearing Jean and goes to Alkali Lake. She's not dead, and they reunite, just in time for Scott to take off his shades, get kissed, and die. Whoops. I give the reunion a 2 out of 10. Because Scott is the fucking worst, and if you want to know why, go check out this video right here. Anyway, she's brought back to the mansion. Xavier explains that he put in psychic blocks, and because of that, she has a dual personality, and not the fucking Phoenix Force. This movie is bullshit. The other personality calls itself the Phoenix because Madeline was apparently taken or whatever. She leaves to go to her childhood home, which is in the Phoenix Saga, but it's more of a, see, this is a Phoenix homage rather than an actual movie about the saga when literally the plot is actually about the mutant cure. But again, the filmmakers didn't care about the Phoenix, so why should I care about their movie? I mean, sure, she does things, but she disappears in Act 2 and stands next to Magneto for most of Act 3. It's stupid and bullshit and no. Just, just no. Also, Jean kills Xavier and Magneto is just sort of fine with that. There's even a line later where he's like, he did so much and had to die. Gross. Anyway, after the third act fight, the army shows up and pisses off the Phoenix, so genocide is the new order of the day. 
Logan stays and confronts the Phoenix as he has a healing factor. Phoenix does make it difficult for him though. Logan tells the Phoenix he would die for Jean, tells Jean he loves her, and then kills her. True love indeed. It wouldn't be terrible if Phoenix was the entire movie. It wasn't. It felt shoehorned in at best, and at worst it felt like a genuine afterthought just to bring Jean back. Adam Holmes explains in his article why X-Men The Last Stand's version of the Dark Phoenix didn't work, that even Femke Jansen said that it being a subplot didn't work, that it deserved its own film. If you ask me, it should be two films. One about the saga, up until the X-Men get captured by the Hellfire Club, and then have the second movie be about the conclusion and end with Jean sacrificing herself to save her friends. Okay, now let's talk about Dark Phoenix. In this film, there's a flashback scene and we see the young Jean is given to Xavier in 1975. Then in 1992, the X-Men go save the astronauts on the Endeavor who are trying to complete their mission. Jean absorbs a solar flare which turns out to be the Phoenix Force and survives the explosion that engulfs the shuttle. Her powers are amplified and when Scott mentions that the kids are calling her Phoenix, she unleashes that power and passes out. Xavier admits that he put psychic barriers up to protect her from her trauma. Jean goes to her childhood home and sees her father, but realizes she's not wanted. That she caused the accident that killed her mother. The X-Men show up, but she beats them single-handedly, accidentally kills Raven, and goes to see Magneto and Genosha. Genosha is a thing in the comics. A refuge for mutants is the most basic definition, but here Magneto protects the people living there. She doesn't find answers there, and Vok, played by Jessica Chastain, explains what the Phoenix Force is to Jean. Anyway, Vok tries to take the Phoenix Force from Jean, and the mutants find themselves on the way to a mutant containment facility due to Jean and Phoenix's recklessness. Xavier convinces the others that Jean is still in there, and they team up to stop the aliens from taking the Phoenix from Jean once they realize that Vok's race will wipe out the planet to start it over again. Jean is asleep as the mutants take on the aliens. Vok shows up to finish taking the Phoenix Force from Jean. Xavier gets pulled into his own mind and asks for Jean's forgiveness. Xavier wanted to give her a family, and she forgives him. Jean wakes up and ejects Vok from the train while the others are protected by Jean. Vok confronts Jean and tries to take the Phoenix Force. Vok tells her she can't control it, so Jean decides to take her to space to kill her instead. She kills Vok and vanishes while the others realize they've lost her. This gets some elements right, but it's more about Xavier's guilt than Jean's agency. And I have nothing against that, but if you're going to be taking a crack at the Dark Phoenix saga again, it would make sense to get most of it right this time. I mean, right? 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 I mean, yes, the childhood home and the Phoenix destroying a planet is all well and good. But don't frame it as Xavier doing the world a service when Jean could have done it herself. Not to mention how this movie tries to do the girl power thing and fails wholeheartedly. Eliana Doctorman in Dark Phoenix tries to correct the errors of X-Men The Last Stand, Does It Succeed explains in detail. There's a certain girl power sheen to this movie that winds up flattening the female characters rather than rendering them as complex realistic beings. The effort to embrace women's abilities mostly manifests in lame lines like, the women are always saving the men around here. You might want to think about changing the name to X-Women, spoken by Jennifer Lawrence's Mystique. It's meant to elicit cheers, but it simply nods at the historical problems of the franchise without actually confronting them. And that happens when men are allowed to direct women. I've said this before, and I'll say it until I gain superpowers. Let women write women, and let people of color write about themselves. The reason Black Panther is so good is because a black man directed it and had a hand in the script. If you want to do the Dark Phoenix saga, obviously have it written by a woman who understands the difference between giving a woman agency and giving a woman a fridging. Because they did fridge Raven for Charles, Beast, and Magneto stories. The other problem with this movie is that Jean is more of a damsel in distress. The original story had Jean corrupted by the Phoenix Force and saving her friends when she realized what she did wrong, but in the film it feels more like she just can't control it. 
Anne Cohen explains this is more about Charles than Jean in Dark Phoenix isn't quite as bad as the Game of Thrones finale, but it's close, when she says, But the most problematic aspect is that deep down, this isn't Jean's story at all. It's Charles. Each installment of the rebooted X-Men franchise has made it increasingly clear that Professor X's own insecurities about belonging and fitting in are what drive him in his purportedly selfless quest to help all mutants. And it's been mostly harmless, until now. His approach towards Jean is incredibly paternalistic. He protected her from her own woman brain, and the revelation of his misdeeds force others around him to question his judgment. Dark Phoenix is about an idealistic man experiencing a woman's trauma as a catalyst to confront his own demons. With all that in mind, let's talk about why this is important. Because X-Men was the precursor to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Lacey Bauer explains in her article how 20 years of X-Men movies have completely failed Jean Grey, that despite the fact that she's one of the franchise's few female leads, Jean gets a little in the way of agency in her own life. Her stories are almost always used as vehicles for other characters, and no matter what she's going through, she has little interiority. This is not a new problem where this character is concerned. The X-Men comics themselves often suffer from similar issues. But that fact doesn't excuse multiple adaptations that double down on the worst aspects of the problem. From embracing some of the worst tropes around the villainization of powerful women, to using a female character's pain to drive the story for the men around her. And that's the problem. We don't see Jean as a hero. She is part of the team, but we never see her relationships with the other X-Men that are not Scott or Logan for the most part. Alex Abad Santos explains in his article how Fox failed the X-Men. The familial relationships between the X-Men are what make them tick. Each of the X-Men has a different relationship with Jean Grey. Storm is Jean's best friend, Cyclops is the love of her life, Beast is a brother to her, Kitty Pride functions as a younger sister. X-Men writers, artists, and fans alike are invested in the pushes and pulls, ebbs and flows of these relationships. This investment in Jean's story is what makes Jean's turn against her fellow X-Men, against her family, and then their turn against their sister, so pivotal in the comic books. I sincerely hope that when the X-Men get rebooted inevitably, that we see these relationships. They are so important in Jean's life and help her overcome her corruption. Abad Santos continues, Jean herself is underwritten in Dark Phoenix. She gets a small origin story about how she unwittingly and accidentally killed her mother with her powers. But beyond that, Jean simply exists to tell us that she can't control the cosmic phoenix force. There's no real sense of what kind of person she is or what parts of her personality make her prone to such carnal megalomania. Not knowing who Jean really is undercuts her transformation in Dark Phoenix because the movie misses an opportunity to make a statement about how all it took was a small push of power to turn a hero into a villain or to urge viewers to feel the loss of someone genuinely good and heroic. This is insulting because there was so much potential with Dark Phoenix in The Last Stand. You could have had the latter movie about just the mutant cure, and that would have maybe worked without the Phoenix saga. Jean didn't have to be part of it at all. And with Dark Phoenix, like I said, you could have had the new movies explain Jean's relationships with the X-Men and then do the Phoenix saga over two movies. I just want a movie where I feel that Jean is represented, that she has agency. I want to see a good movie where Jean finds the Hellfire Club and Emma Frost, that she's torn between her corruption and her friends. But how am I going to see that when I never see the real Jean?